Recently, data was released about Foxhole's population for each faction. This contained three and a half years worth of player population data. The devs never wanted us to have this information, but the owner of Foxhole Stats was able to assemble this data through various APIs. Let's talk about this data and what it means for Foxhole. To understand this data better, we need to understand how Foxhole servers work. Each hex that you see here is its own server. Each server can hold up to 240 players, 120 players for each faction if the hex is maxed out. Backline hexes here are mainly for production, and frontline hexes or where the fighting happens. Side note, backline hexes 95% of the time have no balancing restrictions. There are special cases where backline hexes do receive player restrictions, but those are normally during special operations. I'm going to focus more on the frontline issues with population and queues. The data that has been presented from the Foxhole Stats website strongly suggests that if Faction X has more players than Faction Y, Faction X will win the war. You might be saying to yourself, Rob, that's obvious. And you're right that it's obvious, and it's what most Foxhole players have thought for a long time. We just never had the data to prove it until now. Now that the players have some actual data on this, the devs should be concerned about how we the player base feel about Foxhole and I hope that they are working on a plan to improve this system. We can see from this data that the Colonials are normally playing in the early stages of the war the most. Players normally attribute this to Colonials having better infantry equipment and being more enjoyable to play during this time. Warden populations start to grow more towards the middle of wars because tanks become available. I've seen it firsthand when I played Warden. Players wouldn't log on until the Outlaw or other specific tanks were available to take to the front. Some players like playing infantry and some players like playing with tanks. I have nothing against players only wanting to play during a specific time of a war. They play what is fun and I respect that. If you look back during the past wars, you'll see that colonials normally show signs of good early pushes because of their population. But once we get to the middle of the war, you see that shift in population slowly start to turn blue. The unfortunate part about this population dynamic is it does not stay even for very long. Eventually the colonial population drops and the warden population continues to increase. I want to stop here and say even though the data is showing these trends, there are a lot of psychological factors that take place for all of this to happen. It's not as simple as weapons and tanks. More goes into this data than can be shown, I believe. I think it would be hard to pinpoint each individual case, but the main factors we can probably attribute to all of this is burnout and game balance. We can see that from War 71 and War 100, even though the Wardens technically had more man hours put in, the Colonials actually came out victorious. I would use these two examples to say there are other factors involved in each Foxhole War besides population and hours spent, but I still do think they play a very big role in deciding who is victorious. A majority of the wars show around a 3-5% to population difference favoring the Wardens each war. When you think about all the materials and equipment in Foxhole, a 3-5% to difference in production over 30 days can make a huge difference. Think of it this way, if you had 10 Colonial Lodgy players in the backline doing production but the Wardens had 20, that production is eventually going to overwhelm the Colonial side at some point during the war. We can see from the data that the population size for both factions was fairly balanced between War 63 and 99. From War 63 to 99, the score was 12 Warden wins against 23 Colonial wins. Once War 100 started, the population started to favor the Wardens more. Since then, we've had 9 Warden wins and 3 Colonial wins. The Wardens went from having a 34% win rate all the way up to a 75% win rate. From this data, we can see on average that Colonials have 6.34% less players on average than Wardens do since War 100. If we take out the Colonial wins since War 100, the Warden population has had 9.81% more players than Colonials. This should be a concerning stat to look at. This shouldn't be something that is boiled down to a simple culture issue or skill issue. If we keep saying these things and shrugging at the issue, this game will be worse off in the long run. I'd honestly hate to be a warden and know the only reason that we were winning is because people weren't playing on the other faction. This is not what we should be striving for with Foxhole. It seems like the devs normally give the losing side some kind of buff and the winning side some kind of nerf after every war. I don't agree with this balancing model, but I don't think I can think of a better solution at this time in terms of balance. My overall thought though is that balance should never be decided just because one side has less players than the other side. In the long run, the pendulum will just shift towards the other faction once the balance changes become unbearable for the other faction. And we've seen this happen in past wars within Foxhole where Colonials or Wardens go on 5-6 to six win streaks. But I don't think we should see these kind of huge balance changes where a faction starts to win 5 or 6 wars after those changes are made. With the data that we have been given, I wouldn't be surprised if the devs have been trying to buff the Colonials just based off their population being lower. I would honestly hate for that to be the case, but how else would the devs fix this? Something else to note about the data is that you can start to see the losing side population always start to drop off near the end. So the data has some quitter bias in it, and it misrepresents the average number of players and hours simply because players are quitting the war because they already know it's over. I can't imagine trying to balance a game like Foxhole. There are a lot of factors to take into consideration when it comes to balance. It's not a simple change of percentages and stats on weapons and vehicles, even though the hardcore tank vets out there would tell me otherwise. I believe we have three major factors working against us as Foxhole players. Population, queues, and equipment balance. I would argue 
argue that equipment balance is the last thing that we need to be concerned about when it comes to the health of the game. I'm glad people are talking about the Q system more often. As of right now, I'd like to see our focus move away from balance talk and more towards population and Q issues. After we have those sorted out, we can talk about equipment balance again. The Q system, in my opinion, is not where it needs to be. I believe it's outdated and can be one of the biggest factors in deterring a new player from continuing to play Foxhole. Imagine being a new player currently waiting 20 to 30 minutes in queue only to have your relic base blown up and you have to return to home region. Or you find out that the fight is already over and that the enemy has already moved out of the hex. No one wants that. As I mentioned before, the hexes in Foxhole can hold up to 240 players and 120 players on each side. We rarely see these 120 player fights because players are constantly abusing the queue system. For those of you that don't know, if your side has 40 players in the hex and the enemy side only has 30 players in the hex, players trying to enter the hex on your side will be stuck in queue. They'll be stuck in the queue until one of your teammates leaves or an enemy joins the hex on the other side. Here is an example of what happens in Lockmore most wars. It will be 30 colonials versus 20 wardens. The colonials will push over the bridge and start to gain an advantage. The wardens will then QRF Mercy's Wish and spawn in 20 more players which makes it 40 versus 30. Once the wardens have pushed back the colonials, the wardens will leave the hex and make the fight 30 colonials versus 20 wardens again and rinse and repeat. Imagine playing a game like League of Legends or CSGO where you have to play 5 versus 3 without any mechanics in the game to rebalance your lack of players. This is not how the queue system should work. Instead, I propose that every hex should have a minimum player amount before the system starts trying to balance the population on each side. If 120 players max can be on each side, I would say that we should try having a maximum population before balancing happens at 50 or 60 players per side. If there is a frontline hex that is showing a huge surge of players coming, that's a good opportunity to QRF like we do now for navy invasions. If you think that this is going to cause too much of a zerg playstyle, then maybe we need to look at ways of buffing defenses to prevent this. I would recommend that defenses have different health amounts based on the players in the hex, but that may be overthinking it or making it too complicated. Another issue is with Logi. As a Logi player, I have countless scenarios where I delivered supplies from the backline to the frontline hex where supplies were desperately needed only to find out that a long queue was waiting for me at the hex. I would have to wait 20 or 30 minutes and also have troops complain to me that they weren't getting the supplies that they needed. And I know truck swaps exist. I've tried doing this as well, and it's just as inefficient as waiting for the queue. An idea I've had for a long time is a specific Logi queue. When you arrive at the frontline hex as a Logi player, you will be given the option at the border to pick a normal queue or a Logi queue. The Logi queue has five specific Logi spots. Once a Logi spot opens, you are allowed into the hex and you will have 15 minutes before you are kicked out. This would give us an automatic rotating queue that you know at max has a 15 minute waiting time if not shorter. No more having to deal with truck swapping or waiting for anyone else to leave the hex. Plus, everyone can stop complaining about the Logi players that sometimes want to stay and fight for a little bit after they make their deliveries. If the Logi player wants to stay and fight, they need to join the normal queue. And if you think 15 minutes is too short, I've traveled the entire Foxhole map with a Logi truck in less than 25 minutes. So 15 minutes is plenty of time to get to a relic base or a bunker and drop off your supplies and leave the hex with your truck. I understand why the queue is in place and I understand the reason for wanting to balance out each side in each hex. No one wants zerg hordes just spawning from hex to hex, swarming around like locusts and just steamrolling areas with no players. Foxhole is not meant to be played like that. But what can we do to make the queue system better that would help us individual players and help the population for the faction as well? This is a hard balance question we need to be asking ourselves. Again, I don't think we should be focusing on equipment balance right now. We currently have systems in place for population differences such as respawn timers, but I think that is a small band-aid for a bigger issue. I won't get into respawn timers much this video, but I think we need to do away with the 90 second respawn timer and have a flat 30 second timer that makes battles feel more alive. No one should have to wait a minute and a half to spawn just because the population differences. We also have the faction at capacity warning screen, but I don't think this is a solution either. Again, this is just putting a band-aid over a big hole in a wall. Unfortunately, the 240 player limit is going to remain constant because of the limits of the engine in Foxhole, whereas the goal with Anvil Empires is to have the ability to do a thousand players versus a thousand players and to move away from border hex queues. So we may not see major changes like this until Foxhole 2 comes out, but we do need immediate changes now to keep Foxhole sustainable. It feels pretty bad spending days or even weeks planning an operation only for that operation to get artificially shut down by what the devs call balance. For a game that really wants to promote us working together in teamwork, why have a queue system in place like that? A random thought I had and people will hate me for this, but I think the auto kick in the frontline hex needs to be more strict. I think it needs to be five minutes of no activity strict. I know some of you are going to be doing logi and various tasks, but as long as you're walking around or building or pulling items from a storage, you won't get kicked. With the current way the queue system and population system is, having five players in the front hex that are all taking 20 to 30 minute bathroom or lunch breaks hurts our front line a lot. I still know players that will log in to beat the queue times just to sit in the hex for hours before they actually start to play. The devs tried to fix the auto kick for AFK players 
players recently, but honestly, I don't think it's done much. I will say again, we should be focusing on the population and queue concerns before we worry about game balance. I know game balance is a concern, and I know it is related to population in Foxhole, but I think there are other things that we need to change before we worry about stats and percentages on tanks. Otherwise, all we're going to see is the pendulum swing from one faction to the other faction in terms of which one's more powerful and fun to play. And I don't think any of us want that either. We all know that the population imbalance has played a role in who is victorious over the last couple of years, and a lot of us have always wanted to see data like this to see if it's true. I'm not going to say that this is 100% concrete data, but it's good information to have. Only the devs have the most accurate information and only the devs can do anything about this. It can't be a simple solution of just making the other side more fun to play because then we'll just see the same shift to the other faction. I would be interested in having a war where they give us the population information throughout the war so we as players can make it more even. I don't know if this would work, but something needs to happen to balance this out. And I'm the type of person that would be willing to try an extreme mechanic for a war just to see if it works or not. This is all speculation, but maybe because the Colonials have a smaller population is why we see Colonials have more mass production factory options over the Wardens. I know Colonials lore-wise are supposed to be more the aggressive and Zerg type faction, but maybe it's just based off population and production power. Again, this is only my opinion. If you look closely at the data, you will see wars with 10% population difference are the ones that are most heavily affected. It's impossible for the other faction to outproduce the faction that has that 10% plus population difference. Some might say the devs should lock players out from choosing a faction, but when you lock players out, then they can't play with their friends, and how would you even measure that? I don't think this is a solution. I think we all know that the side with more population is going to have an easier time winning. They just have more people spending time fighting and building and gathering resources. I think it's just simple math. I don't want the devs to rely on balancing their game around these populations. Now that the population data has been posted, will we see any differences in future wars? My guess is going to be no. Players know which factions they like and what they want to play. I would be curious if the devs have any plans to address this issue this year during any of their other future updates. Anvil Empires is going to have three factions, and anyone that has ever played any game where you have three factions knows that one faction is always going to lose every single time because it's going to be extremely underpopulated a majority of the time. It will be interesting to see how they balance Anvil with three factions. What would be the best thing for the devs to do in this situation? I don't think we should pretend that there's an easy solution for this. Man Hours was another big data point that was released. The faction with more Man Hours won every war besides War 71 and War 100, but those are more likely just outliers. There's no way that we can balance which faction spends more time online than the other. How do you think the population and queue system should work in Foxhole? Let me know in the comments. The link to the data will be in the description below. If you're a new player, remember to look at the date of this video. The queue system may not be a problem in future updates. Thank you all so much for watching and for your support. Make sure to subscribe for more Foxhole content. Remember when talking about these issues to think and provide constructive solutions and constructive feedback to those trying to come up with solutions. Cheers!